Testing in progress. So thank God we're processing. No. Okay. Okay, so are we ready? Yes. Alright, so this is uh, supposedly the module where we talk about the learning activity plans that we create for the project and how we um, go uh, and uh, develop uh, these uh, learning activity plans. We'll see them uh, in half of the presentation because we all did uh, the learning activity plans for the video, so I don't think there's much point in us going over it, but it should be there for the module for anyone to, in the future, that wants to access it, they could get that information. But what we're going to do today is that we're going to spend um, half of the time, let's say, seeing the learning activity plan and its sections, and then uh, we um, We'll see something that um, we did on the previous days and for a good reason, how to develop a, an AI generated video. You'll see that there are a lot of defects still and it's not so open source yet. But probably as uh, the competition grows and more uh, online applications develop, I guess they're going to be releasing uh, more free features. But anyway, there's a way to uh, get to develop the video, get the video. And we'll do that secondly, and then uh, we'll try to make a learning activity plan from a video that we have created using uh, AI, uh, which is not exactly the focus of the module, but it's so that it has a bit of interest for us as well. So um, let's see a few things about the learning activity plans. It will have captions. Never mind, let us see if it works. So, uh, what is a lesson plan? We all know a lesson plan is for the teacher to be able to recall uh, the learning activities that uh, he wants to uh, see students, uh, their students to get engaged with. Uh, it has um, specific sections so you can uh, record uh, some things that are considered to be important when you are planning uh, your lesson. For example, we set the learning objectives, we say uh, what the uh, uh, demographic group of students that uh, should target based on the national curriculum most often that we have, uh, what's its duration, uh, what we need to uh, have ready or how we need to prepare the classroom if we need to do such preparation for the context, uh, what uh, resources we will be using in general and uh, describing the activities themselves uh, usually in uh, different phases as the uh, activities progress. And uh, lesson plans are a good way for uh, not only teachers to record what they uh, have done, but also for sometimes we see that uh, it's the Ministry of Education that provides uh, lesson plans, for example, lesson plans, so that they can guide teachers into uh, implementing the national curriculum for its subject. Uh, for this project, we use learning creativity plans. Mm -hmm. At least that's what we Trust named. So much. <laughs> At least that's what we named them instead of lesson plans. The reason, if we go back to Gregory's uh, presentation, is that we uh, are, are shifting from teaching, so from a teacher-centered approach, to students learning uh, towards a student-centered approach. Uh, and we uh, specifically use the word creativity because that's something we want to endorse uh, students. So we want them to be creative and uh, that's something that's uh, in focus uh, when uh, thinking of uh, developing a learning and creative plan. You don't share the screen. I'm not sharing my no. screen. Were well, you so kind enough that you waited 10 minutes? I just noticed. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, why use a uniform way of recording uh, the learning activities? One thing is for the teacher to be able to progressively and through the years develop their own uh, repository of learning activities where they can uh, refer to and uh, freshen up uh, their memory, let's say. 
Uh, and the other uh, thing that's important, especially for projects uh, like that, but uh, we aim for the exchange of ideas between teachers and teachers in different countries. Uh, it's good to have a uniform way of recording learning activities, which is purely uh, not the cases, I, uh, at least in our cases, uh, there's some templates that the uh, ministry suggests, but I guess it would be different maybe from the those that the Italian ministry suggests and so on. So, we developed our own uh, learning creativity plan template and we used those sections that we thought uh, would be appropriate. We also, uh, in this project, have a specific resource among others, which is the video that we use. And because sometimes we don't intend to use the videos in the classroom, we'll see that a lot of learning and uh, creative plans that we make basically extend, uh, maybe we would say in a kind of flip classroom approach and continue the learning uh, outside the classroom using the videos. So that we need to connect it or uh, basically use it as an additional resource for attending a uh, activity that we do in the classroom and that's what most of you have done so it's very close to what a classical a classic lesson plan would have we have an overview where we um, record some uh, things that uh, we think that would help the teacher just by going through this section to identify if this would be a learning plan that would be appropriate uh, for them and uh, for what they are trying uh, to uh, the students to learn. So here we have a, a set of, uh, let's say, brief questions where they, uh, the teacher is asked to state what age group they think that the learning activity is target, uh, how much time uh, it would take for the learning activities to be implemented, and uh, basically a brief description of what the learning activities are. And this is like, oh, let's say, an introduction some, or something that someone would briefly read to see if uh, it suits them. So we have the biology framework afterwards. Uh, and even to this point in the uh, template that we use, we say that it's under development. I don't know if this has been finalized and it would change soon, but uh, here we have, uh, we, will, uh, we kind of state what has been a discussion uh, from the beginning of the project and uh, what Morris said, uh, I think uh, what's kind of the best way, so should we have like three uh, 15 uh, minutes video that we add one on top of the other, we should have three different videos, one 15, one uh, 30 minutes and one 45. And we saw that when we uh, go to teachers and ask them what they uh, think is most suitable, they all came back with different opinions. So we leave it up to them to decide how they want to address the different, uh, let's say, strengths of students. So for a student that's struggling, what do I want to give him? I will give him more information, so I will have the four or five videos for them, minutes videos, and uh, so on. Or basically state if, if the one is like adding to the other and how it should be used. And uh, what type of... Uh, materials are going to be uh, combining uh, the videos because it refers to the biology framework of the project, so specific to it. The second uh, one is the objectives and methodology, so here we have to state what the learning objectives of uh, the learning activities are, so what students will be, let's say, able to do afterwards. Uh, they will, for example, be able to comprehend a concept or be able to uh, perform a specific uh, task or uh, whatever, whatever we think uh, they would be able to do after having participated uh, in uh, these activities. Then uh, we state what the learning outcomes and uh, the expected results uh, would be. This kind of uh, relates to the learning objectives. Uh, what prerequisites they may, uh, may need to have, so for example if it's 
uh, something about the relation geometry, and uh, might, we might say that the prerequisite would be to uh, have uh, enough knowledge on the different uh, shapes, let's say on corners, on uh, whatever it, they would, uh, need to uh, know from the previous uh, learning to be able to participate uh, in uh, the activities that we would be suggesting. And then uh, what types of methodologies, strategies we use, for example, we might say that uh, we use a project-based approach, so we assign students a project to students, and then uh, we give them the video so they can um, understand uh, a, basic, a, a concept that we want them to uh, focus and uh, work on, the, on their project uh, and that relates to uh, this specific topic that is uh, under discussion. Um, so then we have the depression means, which as we said uh, is a specific uh, space setting that we want, maybe we uh, will uh, we'll ask them to work in teams, so we might want to rearrange the desks and have like uh, four uh, team stations uh, so they could uh, work or if we need the uh, computers or tablets, so we might run for the computer lab and so on. Uh, then also we have the resources and tools that we will be using. So for example, we may have a sort of uh, presentation a PPT file to do the subject. We may have a set of uh, videos, not the bio the videos, that are very short and are motivational for students on the topic. Uh, of course, uh, we would also have the biology videos that they would be using either in the classroom or most probably after uh, <coughs> the lesson and there may be some health and safety rules that we may have. It might be an outdoor activity. It might be, uh, let's say, uh, if it's an outdoor and, and we go to a park and there's uh, safety issues or and, and here we work in a lab, but also there are safety issues. We might need uh, science goggles or something. Uh, so here is a uh, space to record that. And then we go to the implementation where basically we um, list the different phases of the uh, learning and creativity plan. So let's say we have phase one, which is more a uh, brief introduction. And we might say that the teacher introduces the subject. Then we might have phase two where we work in teams and we have to describe uh, how uh, we will, um, like we form teams of uh, four, up to four students. So a small group and then we assign them the tasks and so on, leading uh, up to the end of uh, the lesson or the learning activities in the classroom, uh, probably extending to uh, an out-of-the-classroom activity with the bio videos and uh, describing most probably uh, a method of evaluating, assessing uh, to what extent we have achieved uh, the learning objectives that we have uh, said at the beginning of the learning creativity plans and maybe what possible extensions they may have so what could they uh, for example if uh, uh, we um, do a specific learning uh, activity then we may say that if we want to extend this further we can have like uh, students uh, work on a long-term project of one or two months where they collaborate and they do uh, a specific, uh, specific tasks with specific topic and this would be something that we suggest to the uh, teacher that if they want they can build uh, on uh, this specific topic doing uh, some things that are not in the main uh, learning activities that we suggest but would be if someone sees this thing uh, useful. Uh, the difference between uh, maybe what uh, we used to have in different uh, projects uh, compared to this one is that uh, it's maybe the use of uh, the videos so we kind of have to link them with the learning and creativity plan for example we uh, may ask them to watch some videos pre uh, previous to coming to the classroom and doing the learning activities then we do the learning activities and we may ask them to see another video or maybe see the short video that is for the um, advanced students before the classroom how the, uh, the lesson and then ask them to, if we see that they are uh, struggling to understand the concept, ask them to see a uh, video video or in any way that someone wants to link uh, the use of the video learning with uh, the uh, learning activities. 
I think uh, we went through the sections and uh, it won't be of any uh, interest to anyone to uh, go into more depth. So we'll go to the more practical second part of uh, today's module, which is if we can uh, use uh, at this moment AI to develop a learning video and how good would it be? Uh, would it be of any use? Is it better to create something that you need to edit afterwards or is it better to start from scratch? Uh, so we're going to uh, see how it can be done and uh, then uh, we'll ask you to do some of it. Let's, um, I don't know how long this existed but I uh, found out in August where uh, we had a workshop in Korea with uh, simple AI applications and uh, I thought it was very relevant uh, to our project since we saw teachers uh, it took them a, a long time uh, in between uh, the work that they already did to develop the videos so it may be helpful, I think maybe it's more helpful in the introductory video but let's see, we'll go through the process and then we'll do, it. We'll do one together and then you can uh, try to do one yourself so, uh, I guess there could be more applications uh, than these, uh, they are, but this is uh, what I chose and tried out and seems to be working, for me at least. It's the NVIDIA, it's on an online platform, we'll visit the platform. Uh, when you enter the platform, it looks like that, it gives you uh, several choices, but what we're interested in uh, now, it's AI text to video. And you'll see that even the text is AI generated, uh, and this leads to specific uh, steps to creating a video. So we choose AI text to video. There are uh, several templates to choose from. So we choose a template. We say like we want this one because we like the movement, we like uh, the colors and so on. And it might suit uh, what we want. And uh, after we, we, chose, we choose a template, we will go to uh, the main kind of video developing uh, process. So, uh, if you see here, it says uh, Ask AI to write you a script. So, if you press on that, then you, it's like that CPT at this moment. You can ask them a question or tell them that I want a video that's like relevant to that. And it will generate a text proposing the script of the video. So, uh, what I've asked then, uh, what I asked it to do to be relevant to uh, the project, I asked I asked, I, uh, I told it that I want a video explaining the Pythagoras theorem. <coughs> it provided me with a script itself. Welcome to our video on Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem gives us find the length of the third side of a right angle triangle, in a right angle triangle, and it goes on giving an example and explaining uh, what the Pythagoras theorem uh, could be. Here we can edit the script, we can add whatever we like, we can delete whatever we don't like. If we think it's short, we can say longer, like a, a long video explaining Pythagoras theorem or a short video explaining Pythagoras theorem. And afterwards, it doesn't matter because it just gives us an initial structure and then we can edit whatever we want. It's like a word file of text. It's a text box where we can uh, make any changes we want. So we, that's the, um, the script generation from the question. From the script, we ask it to create the scenes. So then it goes and kind of puts the text into boxes and say, okay, uh, the first scene will be the introductory, the second scene will be where we uh, introduce the uh, Pythagoras theorem, then we'll go uh, through the scenes to an example, uh, and so on. So we created the text, the script, we created the scenes, and then we ask them, we ask it to create the video. One uh, issue is that if we, it can be linked to some uh, repositories of um, photos and videos that are available, but if it's not linked, it has a pretty limited repository of itself, but we don't really care, we'll see why, but that's the video that it created by itself with a script. Uh, I just included the sentence a bit about the Pythagoras theorem. That's only, the only thing I did up to this point. So let's see what it did. Will it go? <laughs> it didn't do that, but I had it up, but we'll see.
that's it. In my opinion, a lot of things went wrong. Yeah. But what's, what's your opinion? opinion? Which, which things went wrong? Um, and we'll see how we can address them. The pictures were unrelated. Exactly. It would be good to have related pictures so you can see the example. Some even not appropriate for that page. Mm. The, the, the guy smoking <laughs> at the last of the slide, let's say it's not even appropriate. Yeah, that's one. Uh, the music stopped. That's two. And in my opinion, I think it would be great if there was a uh, voice over, oh. voice, over, voice over explaining, the, reading the text or explaining the a theory. Great. Any fingers? Uh, I would use them to can edit later. Yes. Because I, I see without editing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Yes. Pictures are relevant, the sun goes throughout the way, uh, the still motion in everything, and it took me about 20 minutes because I googled Pythagoras theorem, I found 10 pictures that I like, I uh, load them, loaded them all on the platform, and I was ready. Uh, there is, though, <laughs> uh, a tricky part because everything is most of the things I would say related to AI are on paid versions. So you can explore. But you can tackle this and I guess uh, when uh, and as the, the competition grows and there will be more applications like that, they will provide more free features as they have been doing in all, all things like that. Uh, and uh, it's um, probably a matter of time when uh, Google and Microsoft uh, have their own applications and you can have them either for free or with the uh, students that uh, you uh, have in your school because uh, if we have uh, the Microsoft 365, some and of Google uh, and so on. But what we need to do uh, at this point of time uh, or what we can do to extract the videos, we can record our screen with one of the ways that like Moises showed us yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday and then we can um, do a little bit of editing because it's not a full screen but we'll see how we do it. We are then going to a video editing program, we make it full screen and that's uh, the most difficult part of it. Uh, it's not difficult but it's the most time consuming and it's this last part of getting the video out of the platform. Uh, we'll see how it's done.